A child is too hyperactive. They can't sit still. They're not paying attention in class. These are phrases almost every parent has heard more than once. While you might think this is normal, which it was in most of the cases, modern data suggests otherwise. We are living through what experts are calling an ADHD diagnosis boom. In the last decade, ADHD diagnoses in children have increased by 43%. And that's nearly half of all kids showing signs that were once considered just being kids. So are we overdiagnosing normal childhood behavior or finally recognizing a condition that's been hiding in plain sight? Because here's the uncomfortable truth. That difficult child might not be defiant. Their brain might just work differently. And missing these signs early sets them up for years of low self-esteem and struggle. Let's get this clear. ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a neurodevelopmental condition that affects how the brain controls attention, impulses, and activity levels. So whether you're a parent wondering if your energetic five-year-old has ADHD or are just maybe skeptical about the rise in diagnosis, stick around. This might change the way you think about childhood altogether. Veteran teachers say uh, what used to be one of two kids who struggled to focus in a classroom is now six out of 25 kids in a classroom. That's a dramatic shift. Is this because we are better at recognizing ADHD? Or are we just labeling normal kids as disordered? The answer is complicated. But first, let's clear up a big misconception. There are actually three types of ADHDs. The first is the hyperactive impulsive type. These kids can't sit still. They blurt things out, always moving. And the second type is the inattentive type who are quiet, distracted, and forgetful. These kids often go unnoticed. And the third one, which is the combined type, a mix of both. Now here's the twist. Girls are far more likely to have the inattentive type, which means they're often missed. While boys get labeled as disruptive, girls get labeled as lazy or spacey. Every parent has asked this. My kid does that sometimes. Is it ADHD? The difference is in intensity, frequency, and impact. ADHD behavior is consistent across all settings and disruptive to daily life, and therefore they need a proper assessment. Preschoolers age between three to five years. Now, all preschoolers are energetic. We know that. But ADHD kids, they are in consistent motion and constant motion. They can't sit through a short story. They jump from one activity to the next and have intense emotional reactions. Parents say things like, other kids can color quietly. Uh, mind starts, gets distracted, wanders off and never finishes the task. When they are between ages six to eight, which is early school years, this is when ADHD becomes more visible. You'll see trouble with multi-step instructions, constantly losing things, struggling with organizations or staying seated. They will have impulsiveness and they will find it difficult to take turns. But the most painful impact is self-esteem. Kids say things like, I try to pay attention, but my brain won't let me. That's not laziness, that's neurology. Now, why are ADHD diagnoses increasing? The first one reason for this is better awareness. Teachers and parents now recognize the signs more clearly. Number two, academic pressure. Kids today are expected to sit and focus longer at younger ages. Now, the, the third point is the environmental shift. More screen time, less outdoor play, overstimulation. And the fourth and probably the most important point is false positives. Some kids are diagnosed with ADHD when they actually have anxiety, trauma, learning difficulties. Sometimes they get missed often because they have chronic sleep deprivation, which can mimic hyperactivity, daytime behavior. I see a number of kids in my clinic who uh, have been misdiagnosed with ADHD and put on stimulant medication. When I did some digging into their sleep history, they were chronically sleep deprived. And once we managed that, over time, their hyperactivity and disruptive behavior goes away. There's no blood test or brain scan for ADHD. Diagnosis is based on parent and teacher reports. It's based on developmental history, clinical observation, and ruling out other conditions. 
many doctors see both of this. They see kids who are misdiagnosed with ADHD when it was anxiety. And they also see kids missed as difficult or dismissed as difficult child who were never properly assessed. Medications can be life changing, but it's not a one size fits all. It should always be paired with behavioral therapy, sometimes parent training, school accommodations and physical activity. And not to forget less screen time. The best approach is usually a combination that fits the child. After all the research, here's the reality. We are both overdiagnosing and underdiagnosing ADHD. Overdiagnosing in high pressure school systems where kids are punished for not sitting still. Underdiagnosing in girls, for example, or in low socioeconomic families and inattentive types are less diagnosed and they are overlooked. But here's the real question. Um, is your child getting the support they need? Some need medications, some need therapy, some just need more movement and fewer unrealistic expectations. The goal isn't here to make every kid sit still. No, it's, it's to help every child discover their strengths and build strategies for their challenges. That's not just an ADHD message, it's a human message. If you found this helpful, share it with other parents and spread this message around. The more we understand ADHD, the better we support the kids who need us most. I'm Dr. Arif, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.